Drug guru Timothy Leary, who admitted that he was being used as an agent to complete the mission of Satanist Aleister Crowley in ushering the new eon of Antichrist, recognized the place of rock and roll and youth brainwashing in the subversive power of music. I would urge everyone, and that's one of my basic models, think for yourself, question authority with your friends, and uh, don't obey authority. Timothy Leary referred to the Beatles as the, quote, four evangelists, end quote, and said that rock music was as much a, quote, deconditioner as psychedelic drugs. It is designed, he said, to blow your mind and suspend your conditioned reflexes. Listening to a Beatles album is an hour of deconditioning. George Harrison, like a Pied Piper, used his music as a tool to turn people from Christ to Satan. He seductively tried to draw Christians in by singing Hallelujah and My Sweet Lord in an effort to deceive them. Harrison knew about brainwashing children. He said, quote, the main thing is to get the kids, nail you when you're young and brainwash you. Then they've got you for the rest of your life. Notice here how Harrison deceptively switches from Hallelujah to Hare Krishna in an effort to turn Christians to Krishna. According to the Bhagavad Gita, the Hindu sacred book, Krishna identifies himself as, quote, the Lord of destruction, the serpent of eternity, the prince of demons. According to the Bible, these are references to Satan. George Harrison admitted, my idea in My Sweet Lord, because it sounded like a pop song, was to sneak up on them a bit. The point was, was to have the people not offended by Hallelujah, and by the time it gets to Hare Krishna, they're already hooked and their foot's tapping, and they're already singing along hallelujah to kind of lull them into a sense of false security. And then suddenly it turns to Hare Krishna, and they will all be singing that before they know what's happened. And they'll think, hey, thought I wasn't supposed to like Hare Krishna. Still think the conspiracy to gain control of the minds of our youth is just the outdated, paranoid rantings of a fire and brimstone Puritan preacher? Well, hold on. Because it gets worse, much, much worse. After the turn of the century, the satanic revolution that began through rock music in the 50s and the 60s increased radically. Rolling Stone revealed that David Crosby had fathered the babies for lesbian rock star Melissa Etheridge and her lesbian partner. They referred to it as a new American family. In April 1982, David was arrested for possession of narcotics and a loaded 45 caliber handgun. Eventually, he was convicted and sentenced to five years behind bars. Rolling Stone said that Crosby was also happy to oblige Melissa Etheridge so that true to his roots, he could effect social change. Crosby uses his music as a subversive tool to influence the masses and their children. David Crosby admitted, I figured the only thing to do was to swipe their kids. By saying that, I'm not talking about kidnapping. I'm just talking about changing their value systems, which removes them from their parents' world very effectively. Country artist Garth Brooks admitted that his life was impacted by satanic bands like Kiss and homosexuals like the perverse Freddie Mercury. Well, that's because of the thing that, that I've said a hundred times. When I went to concerts, um, my whole thing was hoping that for one second that artist would, look, that Freddie Mercury from Queen would look at me and I could look at him and go, man, you don't know what your music has done for me. And I'll look. Freddie Mercury sang in Bohemian Rhapsody that Satan or Beelzebub had a demon set aside for him. Garth Brooks nearly committed suicide from torment of a demon. Brooks has stated that he has wielded such power over his audiences that he knows if he wanted to, he could get them to put their hands on the hot stage lights and burn them. Sadly, Garth Brooks has influenced his fan base with themes of sexual immorality and alcohol abuse. Country artist Conway Twitty stated, quote, As a country artist, I'm not proud of a lot of the things in my field. There is no doubt in my mind that we are contributing to the moral decline in America. There's actually an old joke about country music that, like any joke, only has humor in it because there's truth in it. But in this case, the fact that it's true is more sad than funny. But it goes like this. What do you get when you play country music backwards? The answer is, you get your dog back, your truck back, and your wife back, and you get sober. And the only reason that rings true is because country music so often glorifies those same themes and therefore peddles the propaganda and helps to make the messages of things like adultery and debt and alcohol abuse socially acceptable. Yeah, you know my name. You know me.
me as the cowboy. Devil without a cause. Devil without a cause. Devil without a cause. My name is. Satanic rappers like Kid Rock, who openly promote Satanism, drug abuse, prostitution, pimping, profanity, and all matter of perversity and violence, also view themselves as teachers reaching the youth for Satan's kingdom. Typical of his message are lyrics like the following in his song, Killing Brain Cells. Pot smoking, beer drinking, I spend my time killing brain cells, dropping dot or sniffing that blow, referring to cocaine. Kid Rock states that his goal is to connect with the children. He raps in his song, Devil Without a Cause, quote, role model. Your mother blanking heroes, strapped with AKs, devil without a cause, 